if, if you had to give any word of advice, because I speak in prisons all the time and I try to go in and I try to share not just my story, but share with some of our young brothers that you made a mistake but you can rise above your mistake. Your yesterday is just that. It's your yesterday. You don't have to hold on to it. You can let it go and change your tomorrow. But Mm. many of them feel as though I'm locked down, my life is on pause, and I try to just always, that's a, a, yes, for lack of a better way to put it, your life is on pause because you can't go in the streets. But your life is not on pause unless you say it's on pause. You can better yourself right where you're at. You can be the person that you're trying to be right where you're at. So for anybody who is currently incarcerated or is on their way to possibly being incarcerated, before we take this interview, because I want to learn about your son and all that you're going through to help him. What would you tell a young man or young woman who might find themselves in the same situation as you, but God bless you. You came out and you met somebody that, that you know, P. Diddy, everybody in the world know him. Everybody's not going to have that opportunity. But there are other opportunities out there. What would you tell them in terms of you can change your life? It's, you know, that's, that, 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 that question right there is so big. That question is so big because when you get incarcerated nowadays, you still get incarceration is the streets. It's the streets behind the walls. You know what I'm saying? People still look at you for what you have, what you don't have who come visit you, who don't come visit you, what, how much money you spend in the store every week where we go, all of these things still matter. So the most thing that I tell people is if you don't forget your pride, your pride is the first thing you got to tuck away in any environment you go into. Whether you go into an environment, because let's not get it mistaken, people say, okay, you was next to P. Diddy, but people don't understand I have a regular paycheck. I wasn't getting X, Y, Z. I'm not your best friend. I'm not his best friend. I'm not this. I am getting a paycheck. So I'm still living at a certain amount of means. Just because you see me flying and you see me here and there, that's not my money. That's his money. I'm there to do a job. So when I first got with them, I was making $300 a week. You know what I'm saying? Okay, $300 a week wasn't doing nothing for me. But there goes the pride. You know what I'm saying? If I wasn't ready to tuck my pride away, then I wouldn't have ever been able to grow inside the industry because I wouldn't have never gave myself a chance. I would listen to what people were saying. Oh, you with this person, you with that person, you're supposed to have this, you're supposed to have that. And that's when we walk away. Because other people pay pressure and our pride. So I say it's, when you get locked up, that's the first thing. Okay, you from Brooklyn, you from Queens. No, I'm from everywhere. I'm not just from Harlem. So I'm not going to get caught in the Harlem group. I'm not going to get caught in the Brooklyn group because I was already transitioning to becoming better. So if you're trying to come better, you got that same choice that you got in the street. I could run with the crowd or I could run with... The out crowd is really thinking about 10 years from now what they're going to do. I listen to Wallow a lot of times. Me and him talk a lot of times. And he's like, yo, I had a cell phone when I was in jail, Barnes, but I just sat in my cell and I mastered my cell phone. I, I got to see everything that an iPhone could do, even though I was in jail for 20 years. So, you know, some people just have that information that this is what they want to do. You meet some people in jail that are better at the stock market than some people that's in the stock market. You know what I'm saying? Because they study and they read and they done made up their mind that I'm not going back to that life. So I tell people all the time, I talk to the youth, I talk to fathers who really like, is like, yo, I ain't, I, ain't, I don't know, OG, what I'm going to do. No. If you love your son, you love your kid, you can't be the reason your son and kid don't have a father and try to use the same reason for feeding them. I hear people say, yo, I got to feed the family. 
okay, you got to feed the family, but when you locked up or possibly dead, who's going to feed the family? So I'd rather have not enough, but just be able to make it, but I'm in school or I'm doing something else so that five years from now, I won't be stuck in the same transition. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be a man inside. You got to say, forget everybody around me besides my family. You know what I'm saying? I hear people say, yo, blood is thicker than water, and this is that other. No, your family is your family. And you're not, it's not going to be until you start going through a lot of trials and tribulations that you're going to realize exactly what family is. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, that's who's going to be there for you. So outside of family, you got to go to a point where you say, outside of family, I don't care. Because when my rent needs to be paid, when food needs to be given, they thoughts are not going to feed my family. And that's what it is, friend. You got to be able to man up. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.